Yo, what up, William? What's going on, man? Oh, not much. So, hey, you got a minute, bud? Yeah, I'm good. You good? All right. Well, I got my I got my video camera going here. And uh, I wanted to just kind of curious about if you heard any word on the Rockfest stuff yet. I haven't heard anything on the Rockfest. Uh, today is the final voting of that, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I suspect we'll probably be hearing the announcement of the winners uh, by Monday. Okay. Cool, cool. Good shit to hear, man. Um, so anyways, give me a quick second here. I got sedated here on the phone. Sedated 8 one motherfucking 6 Trying to get on the... Jägermeister stage at Rockfest this year, which would be fucking dope as fuck. Um, so, y'all, I was curious if you wanted to bring up some uh, stuff here about the new album, what not coming out. Yeah, yeah, we got the new EP dropping, uh, Push Pause. Uh, we're actually starting to gather up our thoughts and where we want to do the release party. Uh, when we're going to actually release it, that's that's what was teetering on that whole idea of the release was the rock fest. Uh, if we get that, we you know if we hear that announcement that today is going to be on their stage, then of course the release is going to be May 30th and it's going to be you know for free. Um, we weren't you know yet still. I don't think we're prepared for the idea of. Well, if we don't get that spot. So the fans are just going to have to kind of hang on to that one. We still may surprise you with a little, you know, incentive of whatnot. Uh, but other than that, we're kind of, we've got so much on our plate right now. We're just having to kind of roll with the punches right now. Oh, yeah? So I, 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 I did want to tell you, I really enjoyed the video that got released yesterday by Time of Boy Productions. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Mockingbird remix, man, that was fucking classic, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, you know, if, you know, it's, if you can't make fun of yourself, man, you, you don't don't wait for somebody else to do it for you, you know. Just uh, learn how to learn how to laugh at yourself, and you know, and just be yourself. More importantly, and just just have a good time doing what you do. Yeah. Well, man, I'll tell you one thing, man. I'm a firm believer you that you belong up there in Rockfest, man. I am a firm man, fucking I'm, believer, dude. After knowing you yeah. for the last few years, man, going to the gathering, fucking like, totally like, hey, man, fuck you guys, I'm doing a mu music video. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And actually trying to get your fans in on that. I mean, that is right. just some great shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, you know, a lot of artists say, you know, it's, it's, you know, they do their thing, you know, and it's like over here, it's stated, we just want to, we want to try to continue to keep, keep touch with the fans, the people, and, you know, always get their feedback, their opinions, what they desire, you know, what they haven't gotten yet from someone, you know, from an artist or whatever, you know, and we just want to try to, you know, meet those, meet those credentials. Okay. So what, what, what is the horror core game to you these days? I mean, what, what does it become? Horror game, a horror core game. Yes. Well, my opinion on a horror core game: there's nobody, absolutely nobody, touching a horror core game as well as Twisted is. Um, there's, there's nobody. There's nobody. Absolutely nobody. Anybody, anybody else, you know, an ICP, of course, you know, will give them the, give that as the forefathers of, you know, the founding forefathers of that. But at the same time, Twisted. In my mind, in my opinion, from another artist's perspective, has dominated that realm this whole time. There's nobody else. There's nobody else. Anybody else is just a, is really just a, you know, man, this bubble gum. You know, there's your bubble gum for the, the horror core scene. Anybody else is trying to, you know, do that. It's, it's just, man, they're try, they try, it seems to me like they try too hard. It's, you know, the shock factor and the lyrics. You know, and and not really knowing how to deliver those lyrics on a horror core level as well as Twisted does. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, Twisted's I mean, definitely got some shit going on right now, right here, man. Definitely, Twisted's definitely got some shit going on right now, right here. Yeah, they do. They do. They got some. They got some stuff on their plate, and uh, you know, I wish them the best of luck. It's just uh, right now, I got to focus on what Sedate is doing, and the horror core scene is, man. Uh, I wish it luck, you know. I wish I, I wish it luck. It's it needs it needs a little spark, just like other areas of the you know music genres. It needs some kind of spark, you know. It's uh, I think I think some people in the game, honestly, my honest opinion, I think some people out here are hogging it. You know, they're hogging it up, and they're not allowing you know that you know that the other would be or could be horrorcore artists that are out here, you know, get into position to allow them to get a position, it's, man, I think people are hoarding it right now, they're not allowing these guys to come up, they're not allowing them to come through the doors and in the proper channels the way they should have, and not remembering they were once in the same position. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. 
Well, I noticed that there's been like a huge, huge difference in uh, the last couple albums that come out here. Um, I've had a chance to sample of uh, Yellow Wolf's Love Story, which yeah. by far, honestly, is, you know, mainstream or not, I don't give a fuck. He was a gathering performer last year. That album is something else right there, man. Yeah, I haven't got to lay ears on that one, man. I, I haven't, uh, not, not in entirety, you know, I've on some pieces, you know, and, um, and I don't know when I'll actually get to listen to that, but what I do know about that album that, you know, intrigues me is that he recorded it in Nashville on two-inch tape uh, in McBride's, uh, I believe Kevin McBride's studio. Oh, yeah? Which is a, which is a $40 million studio, oh. okay? And if you could even wrap your mind around what $40 million <laughs> puts in a studio. Well, it definitely ain't I no mean, $85 an hour shit. <laughs> it is not. It is not. Uh, and it's all. And he wanted. He wanted to. You know, I read an article where he stated he wanted to. Uh, he wanted. He wanted to use that two-inch tape. He didn't want to use any plugins. He wanted that real analog sound. And uh, I respect. I, I highly respect that angle. I have to because that's where it's at. You know, and any artist that knows anything about the recording process is always going to respect the analog signal. That you cannot, I mean, that's all, what's digital trying to do is trying to emulate analog. Yeah. You know, so you, if you can get a pure two-inch tape analog signal the way he did, I guarantee you, without even hearing any of that album, I know for a fact it's fat. It's clean, <laughs> it's wide, it's, it breathes, it's got air, everything. You know, oh, yeah. Because of that two-inch tape. You know? Oh, yeah, bud. Well, if you get a chance, man, check that shit out. But, uh, no, and then, like, uh, you know, like, I've noticed a big change in music here recently, dude. Like with the Miss Marvel's Missy Link come dropping out, uh, especially effects. And one thing I've noticed, you know, and even Twisted with the Darkness. One thing I've noticed that darkness is mentioned a lot, and there is a lot going on about and, and, and into what I would consider a god realm. And you know, I, I, so music has changed, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I mean, well, it's changed because of the the agenda attached to it, uh, and and it's and it's crazy. A lot of people aren't realizing, especially you know the the low on the totem pole guys. You know, they don't get to they don't actually get to bear witness to it a whole lot. But you know, of course, the politics that are happening that's a given. But you know, there's an agenda attached to this music, and even underground. Uh, uh, what would you call them? Underground uh, big boys. Yep. They're uh, they're they're migrating towards that formula, you know, and having their own agenda, and 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 then by doing so, creating their own agenda, they are limiting and shutting doors on people constantly because of the agenda. And the agenda itself is destroying the craft of music because you see it in the mainstream. The agenda there is to dumb down society to the best of its ability. I mean, who is truly learning something from uh, uh, from Little Wayne? Who's learning something from 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 Future? Who's learning something from you, know, Miley Cyrus? I mean, oh my God, who is learning from these artists that they have on the front line? You're you're not learning any. What you're learning is a sexual content to be to flaunt your body. I'm not saying don't be comfortable with your body. Be just please be comfortable and, and have that, you know, have that ability to be comfortable, but you don't have to flaunt yourself the way, I mean, I just seen her do a video, I don't know if you've seen it yet, the remix of the Kaya track, uh, My Neck, My Back. Yeah. She's on stage topless with her, you know, with tape on her nipples or whatever is going on there, you know, <laughs> yep. and she's got, you know, some see-through yoga pants, white yoga pants on, mm -hmm. or whatever they're called, and, and, uh, <clears throat> what do you have? She's, She's covering my neck, my back to this crowd of crowd of people, and she's you know, and she's my neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack. And these are kids in the in the audience, you know. Mm -hmm. These are teenagers in the audience. See these kind of artists, man. When people don't see this, I don't see if I know they went after Eminem when he first came out. They was they was really they was really on top of him over the you know the word fag, you know, and he was bashing gays and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They really they really hit him. But where are these people? Where are these people? Those same people. Where are those people that I know for a fact have the same views over that? Where are they at for this for this Miley Cyrus girl? They're nowhere to be found, man. I don't see I don't see it going down. You know. 
somebody, something needs to give with this, this agenda that's going on because it is destroying music for sure, brother. It's yes. destroying it. Yes. I would completely yeah. fucking agree with that. But So I know I spoke to you the other day, and, you know, we were talking a little bit about Tech 9 and how he's on a whole new fucking level, bro. How the fuck you feel yeah. about that? How do you what now? I said how Tech 9's on a whole new level. And in his career, man, like he has hit a level, of, I would almost consider godliness, because you know it, the the man is a man. He has made millions upon millions. I mean, he just he figured out a formula a long time ago. But with him being on a new level, I want to know what that means for Sedated. Well, first off, Sedated knows that Tank is only human, and uh, he bleeds like the rest of us, and. On that note, I, I am I am highly proud of him and what he's done and the level he's achieved. I highly respect the level that he's achieved, the work that I know he's had to put in to get to where he's at. Not to mention, you know, you, you have the financial backing that he, you know, that he was able to, to you know, to get, you know, through Travis O'Gwen. But still, without that talent, that money means nothing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, with the combination of the two, it is, he's mentioned it in his lyrics, it's the perfect, it was the perfect duo, and he knew it, because he, he's, he always knew that he had the talent to acquire this level of success, you know, and now how they go about it is their own business, you know, uh, I know they're stirring up a lot of, you know, a lot with their fans, you know, like they always do, though, they've always stirred up the conversation with their fans through Strange Music, and they're just, overall, I think they're doing a great job, and, you know, it's, you know, kudos yeah well what, what does that what does that mean for sedated 816 man like i just i, I just feel like there's nobody else in your that, fucking that, way that, now bro that means, that's a good thing for me too right? <laughs> i mean you're thinking of a you're, you're talking about a guy who's dominated the kansas city scene and still continues to dominate the kansas city scene whenever he comes and does live shows even here i mean he he, he gets a crowd you know yeah. he does he's drawing crowds now so i mean uh now that he's on a higher level of success, that really separates the, you know, there's a gap there. Yes, you know, there because is. he is so busy, he is he is so successful that he has to continue to move forward like the rest of us. And that's not necessarily meaning that he's leaving Kansas City behind, but he's creating a he's creating a hell of a gap for me to be able to grab the same level of success Fuck now yeah. that he's kind of out of my way, you could say. Yeah. I I do feel like he's kinda of out of your way, bro. I mean out of Kansas City, what I hear, man, I I hear a lot of chirping these days, and I hear a lot of fucking bullshit, and honestly, I, I do very once in a while hear some stuff, you know, some, some material that just hits my heart, dude, and like, yeah, actually, I can Kansas feel City, it, Kansas I've lived City's it. He's always probably going to be known for their, you know, their dark music, really just, a, you know, you got a lot of gangster rappers trying to come out of Kansas City, man, it's a, once again, it's that, it's that, it's that, uh, that mirage that's been painted for these cats, you know, it's, uh, but it, once again, that's another area, genre of hip hop, you know, you would, if, if they didn't, if they didn't create the society that we live in, you wouldn't have gangster rap. You had to think about that. People that need to know that, you know, it's not that we need gangster rap. Gangster rap was inevitable, inevitable due to the circumstances in society. Period. And until they fix the circumstances in society, you're going to continue to have gangster rappers. And the real ones out here are the ones that are, they're the ones that truly mean trouble for the venues and the business as a whole, you know, because that's all they know, man. That's all they know. They bully their way around anywhere in these neighborhoods and they take what they want yeah. at any point in time. And they get, the, they get the same mentality coming into the music industry. Well, society as a whole, has created that for them. Yes, it's not it their fault, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the mindset that was created for them. So, I mean, nobody can be mad at gangster rap. If I came up on gangster rap, I love that shit, but Kansas City, man, has a problem with these gangster rappers and, and uh, territory. And, you know, it's just, uh, they're just, they're very sensitive, I guess you could say. <laughs> you yeah. know, they're very sensitive. So I try to steer clear of them. I, I, stay, I stay in my own lane. I don't stomp on any toes, nothing like that. I, I'm not out here, you know, I'm not battling yeah, with I'll anyone. I'm not having beef. Uh -huh. I said, you ain't all swerving and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you just, you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, the, even the gangster rappers gonna have to learn for themselves, you know, you're gonna have to stay in your lane eventually and focus on what you truly want. If you want to be involved in the music business, then guess what? You're gonna have to leave that life behind. Yeah. 
You know, Most definitely, your focus dude. has to be elsewhere. So, because, uh, <laughs> you know, if you want to stay alive as a gangster, your focus has got to be on being a gangster and staying alive. Yeah. Not writing raps. You're writing raps, you're getting caught slipping. You know? Yep. So, you know, you either got to pick one side or the other in my mind. Yeah. So, one last thing before we wrap things up here, man. Uh, I want to make sure people know how to go and get on Rock or go and uh, sign up that petition on Rockfest to get you up there on the Jägermeister stage. Yeah, man. I need to hurry up and do that today because today is the last day. Just go to sedated816.com and follow follow the link from there, and you'll you'll be good to go. And please don't forget to tune in every Thursday on 102.9 FM. You know, at noon for the Sedated Nation Radio. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Very yeah, good stuff. That's, very good that's, stuff. that's a, a very beautiful thing that is uh, coming to our, our, our lives, and we are we are feeling truly blessed with it, and we're trying to, we're trying to make that grow. Yes, most no. definitely. So, uh, all right, Sedated. So well, thank you very much for your time today, bro. Yes. Um, I am the foot with JuggaloNews.net. Yeah. Yeah. All right, homie. Well, I've looked at uh, speaking with you in the future. Um, keep it fucking real like you always do, man. And I, yeah, dude, there are definitely ain't nobody standing your fucking way, bro. I don't, brother. I appreciate you. No problem, bro. I'll holler at you later, bro. Right.